now you'll have to unmute Ron because now it's time for that. Thank you. And now Ron will bring us our first scripture reading. Today's scripture is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Thank you. And now, Ron, would you please go ahead and put that mute back on? Appreciate it. <clears throat> Our second scripture reading is from Mark's gospel in the 10th chapter. As he, Jesus, was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, well, then who can be saved? Jesus looked to them and said, for mortals, it's impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Try a little exercise with me. On a piece of paper, if you need to go get one real quick, and a pencil or a pen. Just take a few moments and write down 10 possessions that you value highly. These need to be material things that you own, not like people or abstractions like faith or freedom, just 10 things you own that you really value. Just take a moment now and just write a list.
And when you're finished, just look up at your camera so I'll know we're, we're about done. <clears throat> okay. Now, imagine that a total stranger comes to you and this person has nothing but the clothes on their back. If you were required to give that person one thing on your list and you couldn't replace it, you just would have to do without it, what would it be? And cross that off your list. Now let's say a close friend comes to you in need. Which one thing would you part with forever for a close friend? And I know it depends on what the friend needs, but just humor me and cross something off your list. Now, Suppose that you needed to evacuate your place of residence and you need to leave behind five things that you might never see again. Cross off those five things. Judy, could you mute yourself, please, Judy B? Thank you. Go ahead, wait a minute. The mute is the little microphone part. I know, my phone's difficult. Oh, sorry. Uh, you keep coming back to me, let me see. So if you started out with 10 things, you're now down to three things. Think about if you had to give those up as well. Are you starting to get a little nervous feeling in the pit of your stomach? Would you put this passage from Mark where Jesus tells the man to sell all of his possessions and give the money to the poor on your list of things we wish Jesus hadn't said? Jesus said to him, if you wish to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the man heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving because he had many possessions. Now, I don't even like to share my popcorn at the movies. So this passage of Jesus and the man who is described in three different gospels as either rich, young, or a ruler, this passage makes me squirm. And the question, that we are all asked, I think, to wrestle with is this. Was Jesus just talking to this particular person some 2,000 plus years ago? Or is Jesus talking to all of us, including us today? So let's walk through this text a little more closely. The whole discussion is an answer to this question that the man asked Jesus, what must I do to have eternal life? And then Jesus lists several of the Ten Commandments. The man replies, I've kept all of these since my youth. Now, I always thought that that would be impossible that he couldn't possibly mean that he's really kept all those commandments since his youth. But my friend and colleague, Rabbi Eric Polakoff, 
from Brene Israel and Southbury tells me that now actually in Judaism, the Ten Commandments are designed as they're interpreted in Judaism so that one could actually follow those. But Jesus says you lack one thing. Go sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and then you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. So remember that this whole dialogue was in response to the question, what must I do to have eternal life? And the one thing we do know about eternal life is that you have to give up your possessions to get there. You cannot take it with you. The man goes off shocked and grieving for he had many possessions. And Jesus, perhaps shaking his head with amusement, says to his disciples, truly I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And when the disciples heard this, they were greatly astounded and they said to one another, well then who can be saved? And when we hear this, we with our lists of the possessions that possess us, we may be greatly astounded and say, well, then who could be saved? But here's the punchline. Here's the moral of the story that often gets overlooked because the camel with the eye of the needle steals the headline. Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it's impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Maybe he had a little twinkle in his eye. So from the very beginning, some Christians did sell all their possessions and share all things in common, but it didn't last very long and there were not very many of them. Most did not. The apostles kept a boat. One of Jesus' main supporters and followers was Lydia, who was a rich merchant who dealt in purple cloth. The man who hosted the Last Supper showed the disciples to a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. In the first letter to Timothy, Christians who are rich in possessions are told that they are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they might take hold of the life that really is life. Jesus knew what was in that rich young man's heart and home and coffers. He knew what for him individually was keeping him from fully entering the kingdom of God. And God knows our hearts and our homes and our bank accounts. God knows for each of us, and it's different, what is preventing us from a full and right relationship with God. And God invites us into a different, fuller, and more holy space. Rich, poor, somewhere in between, it's not what we possess that defines us. It's whose we are. We belong to a generous and gracious God who loves us and who wants us to love God in return, to love our neighbors, to love ourselves, and to love the world that God created and use the resources we have to make it a better place. May it be so. Amen. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me.
The consecrated cross I'll bear Till death shall set me free And then go home my crown There's a crown for me. Upon the crystal pavement, down at Jesus' pierced feet, joyful I'll cast my golden crown. His dear name, repeat. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. Across for me.